We're going to pause to address one issue from the history of economic thought. You can ignore what's on the screen for right now. But you may have noticed that the theory of the firm and the theory of the consumer seem to be quite similar. In the theory of the consumer, at x, y, a whole bunch of indifference curves, then a budget constraint. And the indifference curves s stayed constant, while if you had a change in the price of x or price of y or income, then the budget constraint would move around. So you got to a point like this, and maybe if you had another level of income, you, you got to a point like this. So everything was done in the context of an unchanging set of indifference curves. Now, think about the theory of the cost-minimizing firm. If you want to be on this particular isoquant, then you choose the isocost line that generates the least cost. If you have another isoquant, then you have another similar point. And so you have this set of isoquants that don't change. And it, it doesn't go <laughs> uh, below the the uh, W axis there, but um, you said you have this unchanging set of isoquants in the theory of the firm, just like you have the unchanging set of indifference curves in the theory of the consumer. And the, that raises the question: Why is it that the theory of the firm and the theory of the consumer are so similar? Is it because that consumers and firms basically do the same thing? That even if you weren't an economist, but you were thinking about what firms do and what consumers do, you'd think, oh, that they do more or less the same thing? I, I don't think so. And the following is an insight that I got after reading the book, which is cited here on the screen, uh, More Heat Than Light by Philip Morosky. I didn't actually understand the book very well the first time I read it. And the insight that I got came after thinking about it for a while. I haven't actually gone back to see if the insight is clearly in the book, so but at least it was inspired by the book. And the idea is to think about what was going on in the minds of the earliest neoclassical economists. They were trying to make economics into a science, and if you were trying to do that, then what you try to do is look at what the scientists are doing. Well, what scientists were doing in the 1880s and 1890s, guys like Maxwell, were working on the laws of electricity and magnetism. So in the lower left, I've got a familiar diagram with a magnet, a north, pole, north Pole and a South Pole. Those are a little bit hard to read, but there's the North and the South. There's the magnet. And then you have iron filings put on a sheet of paper over the magnet, and they represent lines of of constant magnetic field, so forth. So that's what was going on in physics. And the idea that I got that's inspired by Morosky is that economists were trying to make economic scientific, so they tried to copy, or they did copy, what physicists were doing. So that basically the idea of a, a set of unchanging field lines, like magnetic field, electric field, gravitational field in physics, or in consumer theory, utility, that is in difference curves, or in the theory of the firm, isoquants, the contra lines of the production function, that, that these were all the same kind of idea, that they took this idea from physics of an unchanging so-called conservative force and then imported it into economics in these two different ways, as consumer theory and as producer theory. So that the fundamental construct used in consumer theory and producer theory actually doesn't have anything to do with either consumers or producers, it has to do with stuff like magnets. Now that, in and of itself, doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the theory. Indeed, that might not be a problem at all. But other economists like uh, Early kind of Marx, uh, Smith, Ricardo, Malthus weren't looking to physics, at least not nearly so carefully, 
not nearly so clearly, for inspiration. They were looking at the economic behavior of humans to inspire their theories. And so that's a difference between what they did in neoclassical economics. Again, it's not to say that neoclassical economics is wrong, but it's certainly interesting from the point of view of the history of economic thought, this hypothesis about why consumer theory and producer theory are so similar, because they're both similar to what was going on in physics in the late 19th century.